Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hello, one and all. Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm your host, Alex Rudy, and we reached the end of September. This month just went by so fast. But I am telling you, I am ending September with a huge bang. I am so humbled and honored to have today's guest. He is a filmmaker, author, blogger, speaker, podcaster. I got on the show Alex Ferrari. Okay, last year when I was starting to make my short film, The Park, I was looking for information and anything I could on making short films, indie films. And at the time, I was working in a place where I could listen to podcasts, and I said, just let me search for one. And the first one I came up was with Indie Film Hustle. I'm like, ooh, that seems like a catchy title. And the guy who runs it has a pretty catchy first name, Alex. So I took a listen, and I was hooked. Not only is his podcast the number one filmmaking podcast on iTunes, but he's also a filmmaker. His films have been featured in over 500 international film festivals. It started with an indie film he made called Broken. It's been screened at over 200 international film festivals, and he had a special edition of DVD that sold over 5,000 units worldwide. And through the years, he's worked in numerous productions in wearing various hats. And then he moved to L.A. Had to get closer to the film biz. That's where all the action is. And then he was just getting tired of seeing so many filmmakers being chewed up by the film business. He decided to start a podcast. And that's when Indie Film Hustle was born. And within three months of its start date, the show became the number one filmmaking podcast on Apple Podcasts. And if that wasn't enough, he decided to start another one uh, a little later called Bulletproof Screenwriting, focusing on screenwriting. And if that wasn't enough, he also started another one recently called Film Entrepreneur. In addition to that, he is also an author. He has his book, Shooting for the Mob, based on the story of making the movie Broken. And he's about to come out with Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, How to Turn Your Indie Film into a Money-Making Business. And the book has already rocketed to the top of the Amazon pre-order charts. And you know what? He said, let me start a streaming service. So he created Indie Film Hustle TV where you can become a member, just like Netflix, and stream all kinds of indie films and tutorials and documentaries. And speaking of movies, he has not only done Broken, but in the last few years he did two feature films, This Is Meg and On the Corner of Ego and Desire, which was shot entirely at the Sundance Film Festival, on location. And it all started with the podcast for me, I started listening to it last year, and it's helped so much. He's interviewed so many filmmakers in so many different departments, from actors to colorists to financiers to screenwriters, and learned so much from them and their stories. And I just figured, why not shoot for the stars? Let me write to him and see if he says yes. And he did. (laughs) It was so... Wild and surreal talking to one of my podcasting heroes. (laughs) And uh, this is a long one. But you know what? I was saying to myself, should I break it up into two parts? Because it's two hours. But it is an incredible two hours. And the best thing with podcasts, you could listen to a little bit and come back to it at any time. 
I am telling you, this is a master class you're getting, folks. This guy is the real deal. He is unbelievably talented and knows how to hustle, knows how to work for what he wants, and is really a positive influence on the filmmaking community and the world at large. I'm telling you, this is going to be an incredible episode. Sit back and enjoy this great moment in time with me and my incredible guest, Alex Ferrari. All right, the moment has arrived. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Alex. (laughs) Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to be on here. It's a great pleasure to have someone I've admired for quite some time. Your 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 film Hustle has helped me with my short movie that I made last year, and I was just looking around for something to help me get ideas and figure stuff out as I made my, embarked on my little short film journey. And indie film Hustle helped me so much. It was very inspiring. I appreciate. It. So thank I you. Appreciate yes. All right, let's get into the journey. So you are yes. a fellow New Yorker. I am. I was raised in New York. Uh, I was born in, in South Florida, raised in New York, and then went back down to South Florida and uh, and spent most of my uh, – from 10 years old on until about 11 years ago, I was stuck in Florida. And I say stuck <laughs> with love. Yes. But as a filmmaker, you understand what I mean. It's, it, you know, it's yeah. not the Mecca and I needed to go where some of the action was. And I'll tell you from when I got here, because when I was in Florida, I was in Miami, which was probably arguably one of the largest markets in Florida, especially for, for filmmaking because of all the movies and stuff that have been shot there over the years. And with that, uh, you know, LA crews would come in and they be, and people are like, oh, we can't, you know, it's not the same. And, and I always always have a chip on my show. I'm like, we're good. What do you mean? We we could do stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not saying that there aren't really good crew people in, in in South Florida. There is. There's no question. I know many of them myself. But when you get here, you understand what they say. They're like, oh, well, I mean, it's just like they just have so much more practice. Like they've been at the gym much longer because they get, they just work out every single day. Where down there, you work out every once in a while. Like when yeah. something shows up. So the skill sets are much much different and when i got here i real like honestly within the first two to three years that i was here i probably learned more than 10 years in florida just purely by working with the caliber of people i started working with and and, and i wasn't working in like a high-end scenario i was working in my spare bedroom as an editor and colorist but the uh-huh. clients that would come in and the experiences i would have and the people i would uh, meet would be fairly uh, fairly interesting it, it definitely ratcheted up my toolbox now were you always a creative person yeah since the beginning man i've been i've been a combination of uh, a, a creative entrepreneur a, fi- a film entrepreneur if you will um but no I, i've always business has always been something uh, i've always been drawn to and you know hustling making you know making money um marketing branding these are things that were kind of, i was kind of programmed with at my at the factory uh, i've learned and, and, and you know and, and honed those skills over the years with a lot of work and, and and hustle no pun intended but the um but a lot of that stuff came innate to me that was one of my skill sets that i just was you know i couldn't play basketball real well what well, you know i couldn't do other things really well but this is something i i i just kind of had and it took me years before i kind of realized it but that mixed with my creative side, where I love to, I and mean, I was I, I used to paint when I was younger. Um, okay. I, but film, film, you know, film caught me when I was in high school. I I got a job at a video store, and that was oh. and that's what that's what started me down the journey. Was I worked four to four to four and a half years, five years, something like that, in a video store, like right before high school, all through high school, and a little bit after, and uh, it was in the glory days. We're talking about late eighties, oh. early nineties. So that's where I kind of fell in love with movies. And then uh, when I got graduated high school, I, I looked around my room and I said, well, what am I going to do with my, my life? Mm-hmm. And I looked and I had 3,000 VHS tapes 
um, in my in my movie collection. I guess I guess I want to be a director. I guess I'm just going to be a director, and that's literally as easy as it was. And that started me on this horrific journey of being a filmmaker. <laughs> so, was there a movie that you saw that you said, you know what, I want to do that? Was there a movie that had an impact? The first movie that that the thought ever crossed my mind was ET, but it was that was eighty two, so I was in second grade, so I went home that that day after watching it. It was my birthday, I'll never forget. My mom took me to see it and I was like, I don't wanna see this. Like I didn't see there was no commercials. There was no all I saw was a poster with this alien finger. I'm like, this looks horrible. Uh mm-hmm. and I I went home and after I was so impressed by that movie, it was so impressionable that I I went home and started writing my first screenplay and which basically was uh, uh, an alien comes down to earth, befriends a boy. And that's pretty much where I left it. So it was, you know, to be fair to me, I, there wasn't a lot of screenwriting knowledge at the time. And I was in second grade. So, you know, cut me some slack. But that was yes. the first time I actually thought of being in the business. But that was a thought that came and flew out of my head. And I didn't rethink really about it again until high school. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the the movies that really hit me hard were you know 80s action films i I loved my 80s action films and uh and then obviously spielberg spielberg's work and you know i mean who in my generation who wasn't affected by spielberg you know then i started going into scorsese and coppola and and kurosawa and and, you know and and hitchcock and all these kind of kubrick you know kubrick as well he's one he's probably one of my favorites but but those the movies that like watching raiders of the lost ark you know, watching yeah. those kind of movies for the first time, you just like, well, I still remember going to see. Oh, I still remember going to see Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I saw Ghostbusters fifty-two times in the movie theaters. Like, I literally watched. I can, I can verbatim that movie. You know, Lethal Weapon. I could probably verbatim that. You know, the first one, like, just off the top of my head. The other movie that I, I literally can, I can probably write it. From memories coming to America is probably still one of my favorite, oh. my favorite <laughs> comedies of all time. It's one of the, one of and they're making the sequel, and they're making the sequel. They're finally coming back out with the sequel for us. I'm excited. Hopefully, we'll see if they still got some magic there. Uh, Eddie's Eddie. We'll see. Eddie, Eddie's Eddie, and if you throw him in that world, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Let's let's hope and pray. Yes, she's your queen. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual chocolate. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we, no, we no, I, we could go off. There. I could go off. There's so yeah, many we, good lines yeah, in there. Could, you know, so those, many those good lines. Just, uh, Eddie was our uh, man. Eddie was our guy in the 80s. Uh, oh, God, of course, of course. So uh, what was the first thing you shot? I don't know if it was on, was it on film or was it on oh. camcorder? <laughs> I actually have never said this out loud before, so you got an exclusive. My very first thing I've ever shot there was two. Was it was it before or after? I think there was two things I shot. I don't remember which came before. I went to a f- filmmaking workshop. I think it was the second thing I did. I went to a filmmaking workshop where I was able to shoot something on high eight, which was kind of like this vampire, <laughs> vampire, th- you know, meeting a hitman thing that I saw. But the very first thing I I think I ever actually tried to do, I think it was when I was in college. Um, my first college before I went to Full Sail. Um, I went to the Art Institute first and then quit because it was horrible. Uh, so I shot a short film, which I never finished editing. It just I shot footage. Was My concept was God was a student in a classroom and his class project was Earth and he failed. And that was basically – the. and there was a teacher and there's, everybody was wearing robes. And it was – you know we shot it on SVHS. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I couldn't get anyone to edit it. There was no nonlinear editing at the time. We're talking about 93, mm. maybe, 93, 94, something like that. So uh, that was probably the first thing I ever shot. But the f- first things I actually really shot that meant en- th- anything to me were uh, in college. I shot a couple of short films that were um, out of school, like school had nothing to do with it. I was just using – resources and connections and friends to make my own things those were the first uh first first few films i did i did a movie called thoughts of a prospective groom where a friend of mine wrote all the dialogue about 